First news is Sports Illustrated features first bur- burkini girl. Burkini. Halema Aden, a Somali American supermodel, has become the first Muslim model to appear in Sports Illustrated wearing a burkini. Young girls who wear a hijab should have women that they look up to in any and every industry, she told BBC. One Twitter user commented, if you're going to wear the hijab to cover your skin, whether you think your our religion calls for it or you want modesty, it's completely counterintuitive to strike a sexy pose in a magazine known for objectifying women. Another comment read, I would get it if it were a swimsuit catalog for women to buy, but the magazine's is specifically made for men. It beats the whole purpose of the hijab. It, it looks great, though. It's so pretty. <laughs> she's so pretty. She's it, gorgeous. She's gorgeous. But uh, also, um, I, I, I know a lot of the people that are going to listen to this later on our podcast can't see, but it's so bright and so colorful. It looks like, if I didn't know this was a hijab, this would be like, wow, that's that's... This is nice. Usually when in the world of fashion, everything looks weird, but this actually looks like pretty impressive. The Yeah, but okay, so a lot of people are going to say, like, obviously, I mean, I agree, like the hijab, the whole point of hijab is to uh, claim ownership over your property, which is woman, right? And you could point that out, but I, I just don't think that we should, like, uh, hate her for doing whatever she's doing i mean this looks great and she could do whatever she wants but she has every right to do that and we also have the right to point out that okay yeah you you know do do you do you and we do us by just say reminding everybody what what the hijab stands for and how many women around the world are being oppressed by it uh but i think while we do that we shouldn't put any hate or pressure on her specifically for doing whatever she's doing. What do you think, Ellie? I don't know. I, I do agree with that, but I, I definitely think that people should point out the hypocrisy just because, I mean, it's there. So I, I think that it's great that she is trying to, to bring her fashion um, you know, for her religion into the modern era, into everybody's home. Uh, through Sports Illustrated, I think that it's very brave of her. I, like like I said earlier, I think she's gorgeous. I think she's great. But there is huge hypocrisy here. And I don't think there's any point in pointing out the hypocrisy, um, you know, and celebrating the fact that this woman is trying to do something new. Wait, you're saying you could do that both, both at the same time? Why not? Right. Yeah, I guess you could do You could point out that this actually looks pretty good. I mean, this got a lot of attention. That's why we're covering it. Some people are like, why are you covering this? Well, it got, it got a lot of attention. It got a lot of engagement on our page. So we talk about whatever the community wants to talk about. And it's very interesting to talk about these things because people usually use this as an opportunity to hate on a certain group of people. Uh, and we say, like, will they, while they point out that this is hypocrisy, we think that you could point out that this is hypocrisy without hating on the people that are doing it, right? Uh, you could point out that this she, she gets to do whatever she wants, that this looks pretty, and she should do whatever she makes her happy, while also mentioning that, you know, remember that we're celebrating here some, a symbol of oppression of women, all, you know, in many countries around the world. You could do those things at the same time. Um, by the way, Ali, a, a lot of people are going to, whenever I po- tweet or post something about the hijab, there's always that one person that says um, men shouldn't talk about hijab. This is a woman thing, right? But I was thinking like, so I think a lot of people think I shouldn't be talking about it because I'm a man. And I think a lot of people think you shouldn't be talking about it because you're white. But right. I think if we put our um, oppression uh, classes together, oppression powers together, me and you maybe together, we, it's kind of like Captain Planet, like you put yeah. your... You Our put powers your, combined. Yeah. <laughs> you put being in an oppressive class of being a woman and me being not being white together. We could maybe we maybe these people would allow us to talk about it if we talk about it together. It's, it's yeah. But what do you think about the people that tell that to me? Like, oh, women, women should only talk about their job. You're, I mean, why are you tweeting about their job? This is it has nothing to do with you. I think that's fucking that's bullshit. Because so uh, I shouldn't swear because YouTube doesn't like it. Because the hijab was enforced by men it's a male invention anyway so what the hell are you guys talking about right well and not only that but we have to have everybody on board if we want to see change right? right it's the same thing with feminists 
if if there were no male feminists, like like back in the you know suffragette days, um, it's going to be a hell of a lot harder because <laughs> you need to have people on board no matter what. Uh, a lot of men say that women shouldn't talk about circumcisions, but are, isn't it us that's having the boys? Isn't it us that's making up the decision on whether or not they're going to be circumcised? There there are certain topics that maybe while we don't have the equipment or we're not. Um, you know, of the gender or or race that people want us to be discussing these things, but we need everybody on board. So I think it's absolutely ridiculous. And I think that people actually get scared. And that's why they say things like, oh, you can't discuss this because, you know, you're a man. Oh, you have no right to discuss this because you're white. Um, no, everybody has a right to an opinion. This is this is a problem for everybody. So Soraya is asking when, when the intention of oppression is eliminated and people are finding it as a choice, then it's fine. But how is that a hypocrisy here? Well, the thing is that these um, the the people that are using it so as an expression of something else completely different from the original intention and the why the hijab was there to begin with. Um, what they do is they deny the original intention. Like, no, I haven't yet met somebody that says, you know, I wear the hijab because I'm expressing this is the way I express my, my uh, myself, but I at the same time I acknowledge that the intention, the, the purpose of the hijab, it was to identify. Uh, to protect your property, the the free woman that you're married, because there's different level of ownership when it comes to women. You either have sex slaves or you have wives, right? And you don't need hijab really necessarily for your sex slaves because they're slaves, but for for your women, you're protecting your property from other men. That's why you put hijab on them, right? It's not it, people, women, to, in, Muslims in free countries now say this is something that I'm exp uh, expressing, but this was never something that women used to express themselves this was something that was put on them by men as a way to protect their property from other men um, and also to you know separate them from their sex slaves um, right so yeah so if so do any do any Muslim women today acknowledge that? I don't think they do because they wouldn't. They probably wouldn't be Muslim if they had, if they knew or admitted that, like uh, that this is the origins of what hijab is meant to represent. A lot of them wouldn't be comfortable with wearing it if they acknowledge that this is what it stood for. Like Sarai, the question, like if what you're saying, would you say the same thing? about the KKK costume, like if somebody wears the KKK costume today and says like, oh, I acknowledge the origins of it was for something else, but I'm wearing it right now uh, without the intention of oppression uh, or without the original intention. And so I know the history of the KKK and I know what the costume stands for, but today I'm going to wear it with a different intention. Would you have the same, uh, would you say the same thing about that, Soraya? Uh, Mike is saying, is the bur burkini, burkini a real thing in Islamic countries? Oh no, actually this is a very good point, Mike. Because this is why I want to separate myself from the way that Muslims are talking about this right now. Because these women are, no matter, like a lot of people that are against Islam, or so again, these are two groups of people. Critics of Islam and anti-Muslim bigots are not the same group of people, right? But the, both of these group of people, when they're talking about this, a lot of people think that she's under a lot of pressure right now but the actual pressure that these people a lot of the most of the hate that these women are getting is not from the critics of islam or anti-muslim bigots which are a completely separate group of people please uh, just because i'm putting it next to each other doesn't mean that i'm saying they're the same um the main hate that these women are getting are from muslims right like in, especially in islamic countries like muslims here in West in in North America, but also in Islamic countries, they're looking at this, and they're they are angered by this more than other people. They are like, "What the hell is this? This is not hijab. The whole point of hijab is modesty. You're not a Muslim. You're making fun of hijab." She's getting a lot more hate from the Muslim community than than any anyone else, and I, that's why I want to make sure that if we point if we criticize or point out the hypocrisy uh, of this. I acknowledge that hey this looks pretty we celebrate that the fact that it looks pretty but at the same time we want to remind you about the origins of this 
we want to make sure we don't do the same thing that they're doing. We don't want to bring hate and anger towards this model, which probably has no idea about any of the stuff that we're talking about. Because, you know, most people don't look into the history of the things that they're doing. I'm pretty sure if she knew the history, she wouldn't be endorsing it, right? So, I mean, I don't think she's just doing the thing that makes her happy. I just want to make sure while we don't do what the Muslim community is doing to her right now. I want to make sure if we point out the hypocrisy, we don't do it with anger, we don't do it with hate. Um, so yeah, the Burkini is actually criticized more by Muslims than non-Muslims. Subham is saying, people think I, uh, I shouldn't talk about it because apparently I don't understand how peaceful Islam is. Um, so let me see. Jack is saying, the origin of the hijab essentially uh, for women it uh, is essentially for women what branding cattle is for farmers oh per jack perfect exactly and while some have freedom to choose it's still used that way right yeah and even if it's not used that way for example if the kkk costume was not used anymore if somebody just used it right now and they're like i'm using it for different something different i'm sure a lot of people that are defending the hijab because it's being used for something different today, would oppose to that, you know, be against that. Burkini, burka, skinny, oh, testing, one, two, three. So I don't know what people are saying here. I'm not, guys, make sure you mention ACES Republic if you want me to read anything. Let me see what the top comments are. Alice saying, it's my choice, says person indoctrinated with religion uh, from birth and threatened with death if they leave. I mean, even if they were, if there was a choice, even if somebody is not indoctrinated, even if somebody was not a Muslim before and they picked up Islam and now they're choosing to wear the hijab, we, uh, they have to acknowledge that it's not a choice for many people. And they have to acknowledge, I mean, they don't have to, but we are there to remind people about the history of this and what it used to stand for and what it still stands for today. Uh, Ken is saying, oh. Kim is saying next month's issue, Mormon and the Magic Undies. Oh yeah, I would like to see that. Ken is saying nothing <laughs> says female empowerment by wearing uh, the headgear your husband forces you to wear. I don't think we should generalize all of this. It's, it's, it could be very possible that she has chosen it all herself, that nobody is pressuring it. Maybe she wasn't even indoctrinated as a child. It still doesn't make it... Uh, she was. Yeah, but I'm just saying, even if she wasn't, even if she wasn't, the hijab still is a symbol of ownership over women. It is that symbol, right? If you want to use it for something completely else, we'll do it. But we will remind people what it stands for. So I is saying, so you think this is Burkini is the indirect approach to just justify actual hijab, just to keep jumping between choice... I don't think they're putting that much thought into it, Soraya. I think she's just a Muslim. She wants to be a model. She's just trying to find a flexible way to be sexy and not give up her hijab at the same time. I don't think they're putting that much philosophical thinking about other than like, hey, how can I have a um, how could I have a career in modeling and not give up the hijab at the same time? Which a lot of people point out that you can't, but she's she's sort of like, well, I'm gonna try. Um, but I want to show you this other version of it that you mentioned. This is this is this one. This one is not pretty. The first one is pretty, but I don't know what the hell this one is. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it looks weird. All right, and uh, let me see what the other comment is. Christina saying, "I saw a little girl, age ten, today in the bus, fully covered except for her face and hands." That image kind of shook me. This is not a free uh, choice. But brainwashing. Yeah, I mean, if you're a kid, then it's brainwashing. So I'm saying even the people who said it's a choice say that their choice is either wearing it or moving away from the right path of Allah. That's what a Muslim classmate of mine said. Yeah, so, okay, so choice-wise, right? So it's either there's different level of, you know, when people say it's a choice, well, in many countries, it's not a choice. It's the law. But then if even if you're not in those countries, it might be forced by your family. Even if it's not forced by your family, you might then the next level is that maybe you were indoctrinated to it as a child. Even if you're not indoctrinated to it as a child, then maybe the, le the less forced version is that you think you have to because hell. 
but then there is a, maybe you will find a very then the next level is that maybe you find a small tiny minority that thinks that you don't you're not gonna go to hell you haven't i haven't met this this is a hypothetical situation i'm sure if you fi look hard enough you'll find it i haven't met anybody like this that weren't indoctrinated as a child doesn't live in a country that is enforced by law doesn't think that you have to wear it to avoid going to hell still chooses to wear it i don't i'm pretty sure if you look hard enough you might find somebody like that but even in that situation and that hypothetical situation that hijab that she's choosing to wear is still a symbol of ownership over women um, just like you know armin a yeah. woman that fit that exact description wrote our page uh, recently so oh. she was a pagan she was a lutheran she was a jehovah's witness and uh, then she jumped over to Islam and she lives in America and she wears the hijab and um, had, a, had a very lovely discussion with her, by the way. So. Well, let's bring her on as a guest. Yes, we should. Yeah, she, let's, ask her, let's ask her if, if it makes her uncomfortable knowing why the hijab was created. Uh, given that now we find somebody actually that it's a choice, right? What, why does she think it's okay to wear it given the history of it and given what it stands for and back then and even today in many other countries, right? I would very, be very curious to what she would say. So Pan is saying, uh, Rahman's daughter said that she chose to wear a burqa and no one forced it to on her. She's the daughter of the Indian musicians. Yeah, well, I would have a follow-up question on that. Like, no one except Allah? Right, no one by by no one are they talking about hum just no human, or are or they are or are they saying it's forced to them by their own belief? Maybe it's forced to them by their own. They're basically they're their own jailers, right? They hold the key to their own jail cell by you know thinking it's required. You know they they have convinced themselves that there is required. So it's still you know choice again is. Whether something is a choice or not is a much more philosophical discussion. I mean, you could, you know, whether free will. So I don't, I'm not going to get into that, but it really, the word choice means different things to different people. So, um, you know, so that could get very technical about what we're exactly talking about here. Uh, let me see if anybody else, anybody else. Ali, do you want to add something? Um, somebody said, I bet she's really level-headed. If you're talking about the woman I met, she actually came to insult us, um, and she was really angry, but my kindness and charm kind of wander over. So we had this great conversation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was really, really interesting because I'd never met a woman who, uh, had turned to Islam the way she had. It was just, mm -hmm. uh, very interesting. So I don't know. I don't know if she's level-headed or not, but we did have a delightful conversation a lot of people come to our uh, atheist republic angry and then they leave kind of like ha ha you know a little bit more happy with us and the other way as well a lot of people come and they're very happy with the atheist republic and they leave very angry uh, chris is saying the hijab in the muslim world is essentially the same as a wedding ring in a christian world this is mine so so stay away i don't know if the same no i don't think it's the same thing as a um wedding ring because bo both cup you know both sides gets a wedding ring and you you know the process of divorce and leaving the person that you married it was not it's not the same now when with wedding rings as as the way marriage used to be back in um you know back in the day where it's actually you buying a property off of a father um, so maybe, yeah, maybe actually that's very interesting. Should we stop wearing wedding rings because it might symbolize, I mean, the people that do marry today, I, I, I'm sure they wouldn't have a problem acknowledging that marriage used to be something else. Marriage used to be a, a business contract between you and another man, right? So given that we acknowledge that and now we have changed it to something different, I don't mind it that people acknowledge that this is now something different. So maybe I would be more okay with women expressing themselves as with hijab if they acknowledged that it used to be something else and they admit what it used to. I mean, the problem is that it's not even used to. It still is, right? So it's not only, not only they have to acknowledge that it used to be something else. It used to be a sign of ownership. It is still a sign of ownership and it's still being used to oppress women 
in many countries around the world. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.